Welcome everybody. My name is David Mizajewski, also known as my elf self Thornbreak in the ElfQuest fandom. I'm super excited to be with you right now because I am here with none other than Wendy Peeney herself. Wendy, welcome. I'm really excited to chat with you tonight about a really amazing project that you've been involved in. And this is the Ed Asner Family Centers Auction. So we're going to get into all of that, and um, I really want to hear from you how you got involved and about the art pieces and everything. But, um, well, actually, why don't we just start there? Can you tell us how you actually got involved with this art auction and the Ed Asner uh, Family Center? Well, I've been involved since 2019 when I got a Facebook message from Bill Sienkiewicz, who is a very renowned illustrator, comic artist, and watercolorist who uh, is also a dear friend. And um, he let me know about this uh, uh, auction coming up where they were looking for art donations from uh, various comic professionals. And I was thrilled to be invited uh, by, by Bill and uh, checked into it immediately. And I realized that this was something that I very much wanted to do because not only do I love Ed Asner and all his work, uh, but I began to get to know what the Ed Asner Family Center was all about and to understand the origins of it, which is that Ed has a number of, uh, of family members with autism and this became his goal to, to change the nature of how uh, people ch challenged like that are educated. And he wanted to start a center where uh, enrichment was the focus, not, not passing tests or, or you know, charts of how they're doing. It was more an idea of, of how they could develop at, in their own soil at their own speed. And, and, and of course, I love the idea of all of that. And, and uh, Ed and his son, Matt, are comics fans. They, they bonded over comics when Matt was really young and just kept it up, you know, in, in, into uh, Matt's adulthood. And so that's where the idea of approaching comic artists came from for the uh, Asner Family Center. Great. Now, I feel like we should probably talk a little bit about Ed. Um, for folks who are not familiar with him and his body of work, can you just say a few words about that? Oh my goodness, he's done so much uh, and his work goes way back, but people would mostly be familiar with him uh, from the Mary Tyler Moore show, his role of uh, Lou Grant, which went on to a spinoff where it was the Lou Grant show. And um, I particularly adore him for his work in the animated uh, series Gargoyles, where he played Hudson the Gargoyle. <laughs> and he did this beautiful Shakespearean job. Uh, his voice was absolutely melodious and I was astonished. And his Scottish accent was flawless. <laughs> That's amazing. And he did recently pass away. Um, yes. So this, I feel like makes the, the, the center and this auction even more special and important this year in particular. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like it's a really fantastic way to honor him and his, you know, his artistic legacy, but also this, this sort of charity and philanthropic legacy that kind of lives on through the family center. So it's, yes, it's, it's kind of a special thing all around. He um, leaves a huge legacy behind not only of his work in theater and film and television, but also this, this work with uh, children and young adults, uh, just letting them blossom in their own soil. It's remarkable. Yeah, I was reading a little bit about it on their website, which everybody should go check out. Again, it's the Ed Asner Family Center. If you just Google that, you'll be able to find it. But um, it really does sound like a special organization. It um, is. Um, I, I felt very fortunate to be given a tour of the, the center, the whole facility by uh, Matt Asner, Ed's son. And um, I, got, I actually got to see uh, the children of different ages uh, doing different art projects and uh, there's just an atmosphere of joy there. Um, I went there to deliver my first piece in 2019, uh, since it wasn't that far from where I lived in Southern California at the time, uh, I hand delivered the first painting. That's and, wonderful. Uh, 
yeah, they were pretty excited about it. And, <laughs> and that's how I got the tour of the center and it, and it cemented, I felt more bonded with the, the whole project than ever and really wanted to continue with it. I bet. Well, well, let's talk about that, that first submission. So this was for, was it last year's auction, the 2020 auction? 2019. 2019. Okay. Yeah. So two years ago, and I'm actually going to share my screen here because I have the piece of art for everybody to see. So Hudson, tell us about Hudson. Tell us about the character. Tell us about Ed's connection. You just mentioned it. And then tell us about this piece before we well, get to this year's piece of art. Well, Gargoyles is, is one of my very favorite animated series. It's a Disney series created by Greg Weissman, who uh, Richard and I admire very much uh, for just, uh, you know, getting this, this unusually mature and exciting show on the air. Uh, just the story of what Greg went through to get it on the air is amazing. Um, Hudson was Ed Asner's character. Uh, and as you can see, he's a very crusty old gargoyle who might as well be a caricature of Ed. <laughs> <laughs> the personality is very similar. Although Ed told them when they approached him to do the voice, Ed said, uh, you know, I, I really do like spunk. Contrary to, to uh, you know, what I said on the Mary Tyler Moore show, I really do like spunk. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, Hudson is quite spunky for his age, and uh, you just don't mess with him, and I just love the character. So I thought this would be a nice way to honor Ed in my first foray into the art auction uh, by uh, painting his character. That is such a cool story. And um, I have to say, I was not familiar really with the, the show Gargoyles. You introduced it to me and you know, getting to watch a couple episodes with you several years back was like such mm -hmm. a treat. And I still have to get back and watch the whole thing, but um, I'm, I'm familiar with the character. And, uh, and of course, it, it, I mean, it all, there, there's a kinship between the, the, the character design and Gargoyles, I feel, and, and all of your work. Like, this looks like a character that you could have designed yourself. Well, the thing of it is, uh, Greg is is kind of one of our babies. Greg grew up reading ElfQuest, and um, you know he's kind of in your age group. And um, he uh, openly admitted to me that w that there was a little bit of ElfQuest influence in the development of Gargoyles. And so I said, "Can I call them my grandchildren?" And he said, "You can call them anything you want as long as you write the intro for my comic." <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> Which, of course, you did. I'm assuming. Yes, I did. Yes, I wonderful, did. wonderful. Well, yeah, it's 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 pretty fantastic. So this was in the 2019 um, uh, auction, and yes. obviously this sold. So some lucky person out there has this wonderful piece of art. And um, so I wanted to show this one before we go on to talking about this year's piece of art. Now, before we show it, tell us, you know, what was the process like this year? Were there any, you know, was there any specific prompt that the artists were given? You know, what, what kind of, what was the process of, for you deciding on the subject for this year's, which we're going to show in a second? Well, the prompt actually was uh, the experience of the first auction in 2019 because um, I was very pleased with uh, the amount that the piece sold for, but I realized that if it had been ElfQuest subject matter, it probably would have gone for quite a bit more. And, you know, the goal is to raise as much money for this wonderful cause as possible. Absolutely. So I did, uh, that is what decided me to do an ElfQuest piece for, for the 2021 auction. Well, what do you think? Should we show everybody what the, what the piece is? Sure. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen again. And bear with me for one second while I pull it up here. All right. So this piece, I um, have to say, I am completely in love with. Oh. It's very powerful. It's oh. absolutely gorgeous. And here it is. Mm. There it is. So tell yeah. us, Wendy, how did you get to this as your submission for this year's auction? Well, uh, first of all, yes, I think I think the word powerful is is kind of what I was aiming for. I wanted to do a piece 
Um, you know, there, there are different convention sketch style pieces that I've done of the characters over the years. And usually they're smiling or in, in some sort of action pose. And it just, it, it just felt to me like it would be very interesting and very powerful to do a piece that shows um, our hero Cutter towards the end of his life when he is truly an elder of the tribe, you know, he's he's well over 600 years old, maybe going on towards 700, and and he's uh, he's been there and done that and seen just about all of it. And and I wanted to try and reflect that in his pose and in his eyes. Um, he has these eternally youthful features, but I thought, how do I show uh, all that he's been through? And it would be in the eyes, and so that is what I focused on. So tell us about this choice of the color in the eyes. And, and I mean, kind of what you were just saying is, is obviously a part of that, but, but it's, it's so powerful. It's so simple and subtle, yet like, like wow, like when you see it, it's, it's like you're struck with it. It's like Cutter's gaze, which is such a mm -hmm. part of his character, but it's not the sort of intense wolf chief gaze that, that you portrayed in the comics. No, it's a far off look. I, I want yeah. to almost paint um, paint his eyes looking off into eternity. Um, you know, he truly is a nature spirit. He's not human, and I and I wanted to convey that in his gaze and relate it to the the wolf size in that sense. That uh, that these these are eyes that have seen more than uh, than humans ever see. Uh, definitely a hundred percent is communicated when I look at that. So it's, it's, it's super powerful. Now I notice that this looks like it's a um, sort of a pen and ink, a traditional style pen and ink yes. piece versus, you know, watercolors or digital art. How did you end up with making that decision? Well, first of all, this is my first pen and ink piece in um, what could may maybe possibly be a couple of years. Um, I work mostly digitally, and, and mostly the reason for that is the meeting of deadlines, because digital is a lot faster and a lot more forgiving than um, traditional uh, pencil and ink. But for this piece, you know, they want a hands-on piece that uh, once it is bid on and won, it can go to the owner. And... Um, so I felt that this would be the best medium to use right now. Nothing too complex, not a full painting using oils or watercolors, but, but a, a, a pen and ink drawing. And uh, if you go visit the, the site of, uh, of the actual auction, you will see that most of the, the comics professionals are contributing pen and ink drawings. So I wanted this to kind of fit in with the, uh, with the lineup. And for all those reasons, I, I decided to go for um, uh, a, a pencil sketch over which I did uh, black and black inks. Well, I, um, I, as you know, and I probably many people probably know because I gush about it all the time. I'm just in love with your use of black and your <laughs> inking skills, Wendy. Um, you know, the it it it's it's very distinct and it's like tight but organic and. I just love everything about it. So this is a particular treat to get to see, you know, kind of that old school style, um, black and white inking, pen and ink work. Um, and it's just fantastic. Now, how big is this piece? Uh, it is, uh, uh, let me see. I, it's 11 by, I think it's 11 by 17. Okay. Yeah, a lot, like a traditional comic, comic book page. 11 by 17, 11 by 15, something around that proportion. Right, right. So big enough to be framed and hung on the wall and oh, be a showstopper. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> now I'm looking right now, this, you know, this, this as of this recording, uh, which is in early October of 2021, the, uh, the current bid is 1500. Now I know there are a lot of ElfQuest fans out there that are equally coveting this piece as, as I am. Um, and so I hope I'm challenging everybody out there. Let's get that number up. Let's see that number go through the roof because, again, this is a charity auction. And for folks, if you're just joining us or, you know, just catching this part of the video, this is a piece that Wendy did for the Ed Asner Family Center's 
annual art auction. And you can read a lot more about that. You can just Google the Ed Asner Family Center and, and the auction and you'll read about what the center's all about or just rewind and watch the beginning part of this video because Wendy and I talked about it. But at any rate, um, you know, any, any amount that this goes for is gonna be a steal for whoever gets it, in my opinion. Yes. And any amount of course is gonna go to this tremendous cause. Um, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna see that number go way up. Now the, the, the auction goes until October 28th. Yes, so people have almost a full month to keep bidding. Exactly, yeah. And hopefully this video will get watched a lot in between now and then and, uh, and long beyond too, because I think it's, I really wanted to do this because this piece is worth having a conversation about. Oh. Um, and I really wanted you to share your perspective on it and just a little bit of the story of the making of it and the meaning of it to you. Um, and so is there anything else that you'd like to share about it or why you think it's important um, to support charities like this? Well, charities like this, but specifically the Ed Asner Family Center, uh, Ed's passing was, um, was, you know, a blow of course uh it came out of came out of the blue uh, and uh it it tends to make you uh think even more deeply about how important it is not to just think about doing something but to to act and do something uh he he and his son matt uh worked together uh, along with many other helpers to develop the center for the purpose of, of nurturing uh, people who are diff differently abled. And uh, this is such a vital thing in, in our society. Um, so I, I rather than say uh, charity events like this, I would say there aren't any quite like this one. This one is very special. And it's made even more special because uh, the founder has just recently passed. And it is, uh, it is a jewel in the crown of his legacy. That is a really fantastic way of putting it. Um, and take one last look here before I stop sharing my screen, everybody. It's a gorgeous piece. And hopefully lots of you out there will bid on it. So thanks for joining me, Wendy. I, again, really wanted to showcase this and highlight it and get this video made. And we're gonna put it out on all of the Elfquest social media. We'll throw links to the actual auction and um, we'll put a thumbnail of the image up as out as well so everybody can get a good look at it. Please like the video, share it across all of your social media so that we can really spread the word about this. So I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed. I am going to not bid on this because I am already spoiled beyond belief. I've got some original Wendy artwork framed right behind me. So, um, uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to bow out of this one, but I know some of you folks out there are, are probably drooling for it. So let's see those bids go up. And, um, you know, when, once it goes, we'll maybe do another video or we'll come back, at least we'll do some postings about it and, um, you know, just celebrate that it actually went and what it went for. That would be marvelous. I look forward to that. And thank you so much, David. I really enjoyed doing this interview with you. Excellent. Well, maybe we'll have to do this more often and do these mm -hmm. little video series and get Richard in on it too. Mm, definitely. All right. I will talk to you soon. All right. Bye for now. Bye everyone.